Hello, welcome to Tapper Machine. I'm Josh Tapper, and if you caught Saturday's video, we took some parts out of the planer to keep the bridge port going, and then we put the planer head back together. Um, and that was this little gear right here. This is my spare that I bought after breaking it. I never expected to break one, never seen that in 27 years doing this. Well, when I didn't finish was the clock spring because I didn't, I lost the screws trying to put it together, little guys, uh, 1024. Um, so lost them. I ran to town and got a four pack for freaking dollars. But you know what? At least we have an option to get that stuff um, close by. But it, you know, like I've said in many videos, this region's very depressed. There isn't much for options. So I order a lot of this stuff in, but this stuff I was luckily able to get at the local hardware store. So we're gonna go ahead, set the clock spring, and we'll talk about the questions that were brought up during the you know, after the video came out and address some of the things that I learned from doing this video and from your comments. All right, so I'm just gonna come in, take my spanner, grab two of the holes, and this one has four holes. Um, my other bridge port only has two. We're just gonna turn it this much to put a little tension on it because that's actually something I learned from the, the comments section of the last video was it's not supposed to return, it's just supposed to maintain the location. So we don't want this thing super, you know, torqued down. I'll get the bottom screw here. I go ahead and tighten the screws. Now I, I would prefer button head screws, but unfortunately our hardware store did not have any. They just had these socket head cap screws, which are just fine. I mean, doesn't look out of place that much. And there you have it. And it doesn't retract when I run it down, so that's good. And I don't think I would like it retracting anyway, so you just want it to hold its position. And actually, looks like I need to go a little bit tighter because it wants to drop right there at the beginning. So I'll go ahead and knock those back out and turn it a little bit more. Well, it drops just a tiny bit, but not enough for me to be concerned about tightening it any further, and that's just fine. Um, so that works out. Now to address some of the questions, and actually I want to address first the fact that I read these comments and I take a lot of this, you know, and, and interpret it as I need to, to, to better myself as well. Um, and one thing that I learned from many of the comments was you don't want it to retract, or at least that's not how the bridge ports are. Um, a lot of Chinese and Taiwanese clones do retract and a lot of guys hated that. I caught that from the, from the uh, comment section and, and quite honestly, it made sense to me that you would, you know, you don't want it to retract. You're putting that handle where you want it. You're putting that quill where you want it. So the retract, retracting of it would be a, a problem. Unless you're drilling a lot of holes, I could see it being beneficial there, but it's not really a drill press, it's a milling machine. So you really don't want that thing to be retracting, I guess. And that makes perfect sense to me when I, when I read the comments and, and really studied it and paid attention. Then I went and watched a couple of the other videos um, that others have done with the um, clock spring and it, it totally added up. So I really appreciate all the comments and the feedback on that because I do learn stuff from the comment section as well. So thank you for all that. So there were a lot of questions and comments about the failure of that gear itself and quite honestly, yes, it, it was, the keyway was cut really in the wrong location. It was cut, you know, so the square corners of the keyway matched the, the grooves, the bottom of the grooves of, of the, um, the gear. 
so it was extra thin there if it would have been clocked just a little bit over so that the square corners were in line with the tooth um, that would have thickened up the material a lot and possibly not broken um, i've honestly never seen this failure before and i've been doing this 27 years i've worked in several shops um, been around bridge ports the whole time lots of them i've been around you know <laughs> Not to insult anybody, but 350 pound fat guys putting a three foot cheater bar on the, the handle and hanging on it. Um, you know, that's not good practice, but I've seen that and I haven't seen one broke. I've seen these bend, um, but I've never seen that gear broke. So that, it was an interesting thing for me and I wasn't even pulling that hard on it when it happened. I was just drilling. I was actually on a phone call at the same time well, and it just went pop on me. Um, so somebody had mentioned that it was probably a, a fatigue failure from time, you know, over time. I can see that. I can totally see that, you know, micro crack starting and it just failed. Um, there was a couple of, uh, well, there was one guy that got blocked for his nasty comments saying I'm a backwoods hack machinist with no mechanical ability. Oh, what the hell? I mean, get a life, buddy. But, you know, when you see me in videos and I'm using both hands, I'm just using really the weight of my arms. I'm not really pulling. I'm just doing that to kind of steady myself, best comfortable situation. You know, you can do it with one hand, but you might as well rest both hands on there and let your, let your weight of your arms do the work. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of how I do it. Sometimes you are pulling. Um, depends on the application. Um, I, you know, I've had uh, drills that are totally sharp and cut like crap, you know, depending on the material and you got to force it a little bit. Stainless steel is one of those that you want a good pressure at a slow speed. So, you know, you're kind of putting some pulp, pulp, you know, pressure on it. So stuff like that, you, you got to be mindful of, you know, these are not a toy. They are a commercial machine meant to be used. And this is a working shop, so I use them. Um, breakage does happen and you just fix them. That's, that's all there is to it. And that beautiful part with the bridge port is parts are available. So um, I didn't think there was much other for comments or questions. I mean, it was a pretty straightforward video. Uh, a lot of guys had commented how, well, now they're gonna tear into their stuff that isn't working. Uh, a few of you had mentioned your, your down feed, your power feed here for the quill doesn't work and that's all right in here. It's pretty easy to get at. Um, and the manual you can get online from the H&W machine repair. So you can get all that stuff. They've got good videos on it. So check that out. And with that, we'll call this video. So until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.